Das ist ein Bleistift. Ich suche einen Bleistift. Er schreibt mit einem Bleistift. Ein Bleistift oder einen Bleistift oder einem Bleistift. Nominativ, Akkusativ oder Dativ. Do these cases also confuse you? Do you also ask yourself when to use nominative, when to use accusative and when to use dative? Today we will be discussing these three cases in this video and hopefully be able to clear your doubts by the end of it. Hello everyone and welcome to our video series on Learn German for Beginners. In this video we will be learning about the three important cases in the German language nominative, accusative and the dative. We will learn what these exactly are and when to use them. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for learning German for free and in the easiest way. We offer structured courses for A1, A2, B1 and B2 and a variety of topics from grammar and vocabulary to common mistakes one can make in German. You can also visit our page on patreon.com to get free worksheets, transcripts, early access to our videos and more. So let's begin. Nominative Accusative und Dative. Here's the first case. Nominative. Let's look at some sentences to understand this case. Sabine ist ledig. Das Haus ist groß. In the first sentence, Sabine, and in the second sentence, das Haus. These two are conjugating the verb in the sentence. Hence, they are the subject, and this subject is in nominative. So the verb basically depends on the subject or on the nominative. So to understand this better, ein Satz ist Subjekt plus Verb und Subjekt ist immer nominative and the verb is conjugated by the subject. Now the subject can either be nomen oder pronomen and these can be singular or plural. Let's look at an example. Person. Wer ist das? Das ist Peter. So whenever the subject, which is a person here, is answering my question wer That means this person is nominative. Sache. Was ist das? Das ist ein Bus. So if my subject, which is a thing in this case, is answering my question was, then this is a nominative. Let's look at one more sentence. Wer kommt aus Köln? Peter kommt aus Köln. So in this case, Peter is the nominative. Was ist groß? Der Bus ist groß. So here in this sentence, my nominative is der Bus. So all you have to remember is that subject is always conjugating the verb and it is also answering the question wer when it's a person and was when it's a thing. Verben mit Nominative The nominative case also has its specific rules. For example, there are a few verbs that can only be used with the nominative case and with no other case, except when there are prepositions in the sentence. Let's do a few of these important verbs. Sein And here are two examples. Ich bin Lehrerin. Whenever you are talking of professions, you always say Ich bin Lehrerin or Arzt, etc. You don't say Ich bin eine Lehrerin. That's wrong. So you would just say Ich bin Schauspieler, Ich bin Ingenieur, etc. Next one. Sabine 
ist aus England. Here again, Sabine ist Nominativ, Verb is ist and aus England is basically a prepositional object. That means there is a preposition with the object. The next verb is werden. Robert wird 30 Jahre alt. So here the nominative is Robert and whenever you're talking of becoming a particular age, then you use this verb. Let's take another sentence. Ich werde Schauspieler. So, again we're talking of professions. And remember, with professions you don't say ein oder eine. In this case, since you are becoming someone, you would use werden. The next verb is bleiben. Ich bleibe heute zu Hause. Here, my nominative subject is ich and that also conjugates the verb. Here again, zu Hause is a prepositional object. Let's see the next sentence. Bleiben Sie stehen. Here, Sie is my nominative subject and the verb is conjugated according to Sie. This is what you should remember about the nominative case. Every sentence has a subject which conjugates the verb. The subject is always in nominative. With some verbs, you can only have a subject. That is the nominative case. Now let's move on to the next case. Accusative. To understand the accusative case, let's first take two sentences. Maria hat einen Hund. Wir kaufen ein Auto. Maria in the first sentence and wir in the second sentence is the subject, which is in nominative. Do remember that the subject always conjugates the verb. In the first case, hat is conjugated by Maria and in the second case, kaufen is conjugated by wir. Einen Hund in the first sentence and ein Auto in the second sentence. Both these are the objects and these objects are in accusative. Now let's try to understand object in accusative. An object in accusative can be a person, eine Person oder eine Sache, can be a thing. Both of them can either be in singular or in plural. Let's do an example for each one of them. Person. Wen liebt Petra? Petra liebt ihren Mann. In this case, ihren Mann is the accusative object. And for persons, you would ask wen. In the other case, when you have Sache, or things. You would ask, Was hast du? Ich habe ein Auto. In this case, ein Auto is the accusative object and the question is formed with was. Wann benutzt man Akkusativ? It's very important to know where exactly can the accusative case be used. Let's look at the various possibilities. The first case, das Akkusative Objekt ist ein direktes Objekt. When there is no other person or thing except the nominative subject and another object, then this object is the direct object the subject is dealing with. In this case, this object is the Akkusative Objekt. Let's look at an example to understand this better. Ich esse einen Apfel. In this case, ich is the subject, whereas einen Apfel is the directus object or the accusative object. In the case of accusative, the masculine article changes from ein to einen. You must remember that this happens only in the case of masculine article. Der will change to den. 
all other articles in feminine, neutral or plural remain the same in the accusative case. To revise these articles, you can watch our video on accusative articles. Let's take another example. Ich liebe meine Familie. Ich is the subject, whereas meine Familie is the director's object or the accusative object. Accusative is also used with accusative prepositions. Mit accusative preposition. Let's look at an example. Ich habe eine Tasche für meinen Bruder. In this case, ich is my nominative subject, eine Tasche is my accusative object oder director's object, whereas für meinen Bruder is a prepositional object or prepositionales object. And in this case, since the preposition is für, which is accusative, this object is mit accusative preposition. And accordingly, the change in the article, mein, changes to meinen. There are seven prepositions which take accusative. These are bis, ohne, für, um, durch, gegen, entlang. To know what these prepositions mean and how they are used, you can watch our video on accusative prepositions. There's another case where accusative is used. Mit Zeitangaben. Let's look at an example. Jeden Tag gehe ich joggen. In this case, jeden Tag is my expression of time and this is used in accusative. Let's look at a few more expressions of time that can be used in accusative. Jeden Tag Jeden Morgen You can also say Jeden Abend Letzten Sommer or Letzten Winter Diesen Winter or any other season with article der, den ganzen Abend, etc. Verben mit Akkusativ. Now let's look at a few verbs which use the accusative case. The first sentence is Ich möchte eine Cola. In this sentence, eine Cola is the accusative object. So here you can see that the verb möchten takes an accusative object. Let's look at the next sentence. Ich habe einen Hund. In this case, einen Hund is the accusative object. So, you can see that the verb haben takes an accusative object. These verbs can also take a prepositional object. For example, ich habe einen Hund aus Russland. Moving on to the next sentence. Ich nehme eine Pizza. In this case, eine Pizza is the accusative object. Hence, you can see that the verb nehmen also takes accusative object. There are other verbs with accusative which can be used. Suchen, finden, kaufen, lesen, besuchen, bestellen, trinken, essen, etc. What happens to the article im Akkusativ? In Akkusativ, only the masculine article changes. For example, for the bestimmte Artikel, der changes to den, whereas in unbestimmte Artikel, ein changes to einen. Similarly, in the negative Artikel, kein changes to keinen. All the other articles remain the same as they were in nominative. This is also valid for personal articles. Mein changes to meinen, dein changes to deinen, etc. For these, you can watch our specific videos. Links can be found below in the description. 
Now it's time to move on to the third case. Dative. Let's look at two sentences first. Die Mutter kauft ein Kleid. Die Mutter kauft der Tochter ein Kleid. The first sentence is without the dative object, whereas the second sentence is with a dative object. Let's look at the second sentence once again. Die Mutter kauft der Tochter ein Kleid. In this sentence, die Mutter is the subject and the nominative. Do remember that the nominative always conjugates the verb. Ein Kleid is the director's object or the accusative object. Since the article for Kleid is das and in unbestimmt ein, it does not change to any other article in accusative. It remains the same. In this sentence, der Tochter is the indirectus object and this object is the dative object. And since it is the dative object, the article die Tochter changes to der Tochter. In sentences with two objects, the indirect object is mostly the person for whom the action is intended. In this case, the mother buys a dress. This is the action. She buys a dress for the daughter. That means this action is for the daughter. Hence, the daughter is the indirect object or the dative object. Let's look at another example. Die Eltern geben ihrem Sohn einen Kuli. In this sentence, die Eltern are the subject, which is nominative. Einen Kuli is the directus object, which is accusative. And why is it einen? Because the masculine article ein changes to einen in accusative. The second object, ihrem Sohn, is the indirectus object or the dative object. In this case, ihr Sohn changes to ihrem Sohn because it's the dative object. Do remember that whenever you see two objects in a sentence, then mostly the person is the indirect object. It is the object for which the action is intended. In this case, the parents buy a pen, this is the action, and they buy it for their son. That means he is the indirect object. Wann benutzt man Dativ? It's very important to understand when to use the dative case. Let's see when to use it. The first case, I'm sure it's clear to you by now. Whenever there is an indirect object. This object will be the dative object. In most cases, it's a person. It could be singular or plural. This is answered by the question, Wem? Wem kocht Petra eine Suppe? Petra kocht dem Mann eine Suppe. This is the question you ask for the dative object. Let's look at a few sentences where we can see how the article changes. Der Weihnachtsmann gibt dem Mann ein Geschenk. Since Mann here is the dative object, the article der Mann changes to dem Mann. Let's look at the next sentence. Das ist meine Tochter. Ich gebe meiner Tochter einen Kuss. Since the article for Tochter is die, in dative, meine changes to meiner. We'll be summarizing all the articles at the end of the chapter. Let's move on to the second use. Mit dative Präpositionen. Here, it can be used with Person, 
oder eine Sache. Ein Boot can be in singular or plural. Let's look at a few examples. In the case when it's a person. Ich spreche mit einem Mann. In this case, this is the prepositional object and since mit is a dative preposition, ein Mann changes to einem Mann. Let's look at the next example. In the case of Sache. Ich fahre mit dem Auto. Here, mit dem Auto is the prepositional object and since mit is a dative preposition, das Auto changes to dem Auto. There are a few dative prepositions. The most common ones are von, zu, seit, nach, ab, aus, mit, bei, gegenüber. To learn the usage and meanings of these prepositions, you can watch our video on dative prepositionen. Let's look at another use of the dative. Verben mit dative. In this case, if you have a verb with dative case, you don't need an accusative object. You directly use a dative object. Let's look at a few examples. Die Uhr gehört mir. As you can notice here, die Uhr is nominative and mir is the dative object. There is no accusative object in this case. This only happens when there is a dative verb in the sentence. In this case, gehören is a dative verb. Mir is a personal pronoun in dative for ich. These also we have discussed in detail in a separate video. Don't forget to watch that too. Link can be found below in the description. Here is another example. Wie kann ich Ihnen helfen? Ich is the nominative. Ihnen is the dative object. Since helfen is a dative verb, we just take the nominative and the dative object. You can watch our video on dative verben if you want to know which of the verbs are dative verbs. Coming to the next use of the dative case. Mit manchen Adjektiven. Sometimes with some adjectives we use the dative case. Here's the first example. Mir ist kalt. Or you can say, mir ist es kalt. Similarly, mir ist es langweilig. Or you can say, mir ist langweilig. What happens to the article im Dativ? Here is a summary of all the articles. Bestimmte, unbestimmte and negative article im Dativ. For the bestimmte, unbestimmte and negative article in masculine, you should remember that they all end with am, that is dem, einem, keinem. Similarly, the articles in feminine end with an er, that is der, einer und keiner. The neutral article is similar to the masculine article. All you have to do is add an am at the end, that is dem, einem, keinem. For plural, only the unbestimmte article has no dative article, but for bestimmt and negative, you add an an and don't forget to add an n to the plural noun in dative. Similarly, you would use these endings also for possessive articles. Here is an overview. Mein will change to meinem for masculine and neutral article, meiner for feminine article, and meinen for plural with an an at the end. Hope this was able to clear your doubts. To practice what you have learned, become a patron free of cost and download a free worksheet from our page on patreon.com. 
All links can be found below in the description. You can also gain access to our transcripts by becoming a $1 patron and to our podcasts by becoming a $5 patron. Danke! Thanks for watching this video. If you liked this video, do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you still haven't. You can click on the bell to receive notifications whenever we upload a new video. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. Tschüss! Auf Wiedersehen!